This is Uyghur Stories. Stories from the Uyghur diaspora. Hello, and welcome to a special bonus episode of Uyghur Stories. I'm John Baer. Last week, we released our third episode, Catching Feelings, about contemporary Uyghur poetry. While recording that episode, Mukaddas and I talked about one of the most famous living Uyghur poets, Perhat Tursun. That part of our conversation didn't make it into the final edit of the episode, but we still wanted to share it with you. And we decided to pair it with a recording of an event that Mukaddas recently hosted online to mark the third anniversary of Perhat Tursun's disappearance in the Uyghur region. That event, originally broadcast live on January 31st, 2021, featured two of the people you heard on last week's poetry episode, Dr. Joshua Freeman and the poet Muyasser Hendan. The event also featured Uyghur poet Tahir Hamut Izgil and a leading researcher and translator, Darren Byler. So I'd like to share with you the conversation Mukadas and I had about Perhat Tursun, followed by the audio of the online event. We've also posted the video of the event to the Uyghur Stories YouTube page and to our website if you'd prefer to watch it, which I recommend. And finally, in discussing Parhat Tursun in his interview with Mukaddas for last week's episode, Josh Freeman had this to say about Perhat and about how the crisis in the Uyghur region has affected this most vital of art forms. You know, you can see in this kind of one brilliant author's case the um, incredible human cost and cruelty of the Chinese state's campaign of repression in the Uyghur region. Um, you know, the statistics surrounding what's happening are so mind boggling that they're simply hard to absorb. Um, the number of people that are being targeted, you know, the million plus people that were sent to the camps, again, with no charges, no date of release, no news, no nothing. The number of people is so huge that um, it's impossible to get one's head around it. Um, so I would encourage you know your listeners to think about Peratosun, just one one person out of a million or more, um, and uh, what it means for him and his family and his friends, um, and also for the world, um, what does it mean that we are losing, um, you know, uh, a million plus individuals like this into, uh, you know, this gulag, um, you know, it's, uh, impossible to talk about Uyghur poetry today without talking about the fate of so many Uyghur poets. And I could go on and on with the names of poets who have been disappeared uh, within the last three years. Um, actually, we're, it's getting on four years now. Um, this has gone on for so long that um, you know, it's hard to even speak of it as an event now. It's now almost an era. In the audio of the event that you'll hear, Josh also had an important message to share, which I'd like to highlight for you now. He said, What I would ask of everyone listening is, raise awareness of the crisis in the Uyghur region in every way you can. Tell your friends, write your newspaper, use social media, write your representatives, write the Chinese embassy. If Perhat were here, he would speak out far more eloquently than I can on this subject. But since he cannot be here, we must all speak out as clearly as possible. Thank you. One of the um, very interesting contemporary poet that Josh and I talked about is Perhat Tursun. Um, I first came to know him actually through some kind of um, very um, 
I came to know him through like a lot of um, debates in Uyghur society, rather he's uh, representing Uyghur uh, spirit well, or his, his works are controversial. So um, mm. it was years ago, but, and then I had this really intimate relationship with his poetry, creating um, performance two years ago in New York with Lisa. And um, we created this work around his poetry called Elegy, Qasida. So suddenly I had a different um, way of listening to his poetry and listed a different way of understanding his poetry. So Parhat is a poet and he is also a novelist. Is that right? Yes. And he is... Uh, it sounds like he's a very central figure in contemporary Uyghur poetry and writing and has been for 20 years longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he was known, like, we people started to talk about him more than maybe before is with his a novel art of suicide as josh explained and um mm -hmm. as josh will say a lot of people don't know what he wrote in this novel but um it's just for the scandal that just for the talks which generated after this novel that people uh get got to know Tursun, which was really true and um um, it was around um, 1995 or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. So he published this novel, The Art of Suicide, in the 90s. And you're saying his he became sort of a famous or maybe even infamous figure, uh, even much, he was much more famous even than known by people who had, hadn't even read his book. He was that sort of big of a deal. Uh, because of this mm -hmm. book. Very mm -hmm. interesting. And so, and he continued to write and develop a following and perform his poetry um, for years after yes. that. Yes, yes. He continued writing uh, novellas and he, poetry and, um, um, and he, he was a teacher as well, and he taught in Beijing, and a lot of students really um, loved him. Some of them even like sees him like a really um, spiritual father, actually, for some. So he's a very interesting figure, unfortunately, taken to a camp in uh, three years ago. So mm -hmm. we still don't know if he's fine, if he's still working if he's still writing something or if he's how he's dealing with all this atrocity. Hello again. Hi. Um, Salam alaikum, kanda afalungla. Um, welcome, welcome for this very emotional and very important event. Um, you're joining uh, us live for uh, for the anniversary, the third anniversary of the dis disappear um, the disappeared um, put into camp of Parhatursun. Um, as you might know, or you might not know, he's a very, he's one of the brilliant mind, uh, br brilliant Uyghur mind. He's um, a writer, poet, he's a teacher, he's a philosopher, he's many things. Um, today, we're really trying to remember his work, his life, and also, um, also trying to raise awareness of his disappearance. We try to uh, tell the world that it is a great loss, um, that we cannot hear from him, we cannot reach out to him, we cannot read, read his work. This is um, really um, a very sad, sad anniversary. So today, 
I'm really honored to be here with my friends, with my colleagues, and also brilliant researchers, um, uh, writers that we invited to this panel. Um, we will start with um, Joshua Al Freeman. He is a very great friend of mine. We have been doing great work to. Um, um, he has been doing great work to translate um, Uyghur poetry, and um, uh, I had this really great privilege to work with him to um, to share Uyghur poetry with wider audience. We also have um, Tahir Hamut Izgil. He's, as you know, he's a filmmaker, he's a writer, he's a very important intellectual who's working, doing a lot of work to uh, make people understand um, Uyghur sufferings and Uyghur uh, culture. We also have um, Yasser Khandan. You all know she is an um, educator. She is the founder of um, a great uh, foundation to help children to learn uh, Uyghur language. And she she is also a brilliant writer. She's also here. You will see her talking about Perhat, Perhat Tursun as well. And we also have the privilege to have Darren Baylor. And he's a, he's a friend. He is a friend of all of us. And he is a great researcher, um, um, relentlessly working to make Uyghur case, Uyghur crisis uh, heard by many, many people in the world. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we will be talking about um, Perhat Tursun's life, Perhat Tursun's work today, and also we will share some of his work um, with some of the um, artistic videos, and also uh, we will um, her, we will hear Miasa reciting one of the poem that she wrote for uh, Perhat Tursun, translated by Josh. So I will welcome the first speaker, um, um, Josh, Joshua L. Freeman. Um, I will add him on my screen. Ha, hello, Josh. Hi, Mokadas. Thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm really happy that you're here and then talk about um, Parhat Tursun. Um, please go place. ahead and have him. <laughs> um, this is a sad occasion, but uh, I am happy to be here and I'm happy to be able to share with everybody watching um, about Parat, about his work. Um, he's a good friend of mine. Um, so I'll try to keep it relatively short. Um, and uh, Mokhadas has just asked me to sort of introduce Parat. Um, so he was born in 1969 in Atush, in the southwest of the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Uh, and he began writing poetry as a teenager. Uh, so Peratosun then went to college in Beijing, where he studied Uyghur literature, and he later earned a PhD in the same subject. Um, even as a young college student, Perat was really influential among his friends. Uh, he's charismatic. He encouraged other young Uyghur intellectuals in Beijing to learn Chinese fluently in order to read translations of other literatures into Chinese, uh, since relatively little was being translated into Uyghur at the time. And uh, Perat himself was deeply influenced um, by what he was reading and Western modernist literature and philosophy and psychoanalysis, all of that shows up in his writing. Um, returning after college to Urumqi, capital of the Uyghur region, um, Parat took work in the late 1980s as a researcher at the Xinjiang People's Arts Center, but he always viewed his real vocation as writing, and it's as a writer that he became famous. Uh, so when I first learned Uyghur and began reading poetry, uh, there were two or three poets I was particularly struck by. One of them was Perat Tursun. Uh, so Perat Tursuns were actually among the first poems that I ever translated. Um, the first Uyghur English poetry translation that I ever published actually consisted of two poems by Perat. One of them is Morning Feeling, at the Gentuirze, and one of them is Elegy, Chasida. Uh, you'll hear both of them today. Uh, so Perat Tursun's poetry is groundbreaking. Uh, emphasis on the breaking. Uh, he delights in challenging convention in all forms. Conventions of style, uh, conventions of form, social conventions of what one should write about and what one shouldn't. Um, his poetry is also beautiful and powerful and moving. Uh, listen carefully to Elegy when you hear it today. Few poems better capture the individual battered by history but refusing to give in to it. But it's not for his poetry that Perat Tursun is best known in Uyghur society. It's for his equally iconoclastic fiction, 
and most notably his controversial novel, The Art of Suicide. Um, you'll be hearing more from other panelists today about Perot's uh, fictional work, his novels, and so on. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Perot as a person, uh, because he's someone I know very well, and I want to share that with you. So when I first read Perot's work, uh, when I was living in Arumchi, um, I learned that Perot Tosun actually lived in the same city. So through a friend, I got in touch with him. It was around 2007. Over the next 10 years, I got to know Perot very well. Um, for years, we and other friends met regularly for Ultrushla, uh, which is dinner with drinks, usually a lot of drinks. Um, I count Perat as one of the people who's influenced me, who've, who has influenced me most in my adult life. Uh, as brilliant as he is a writer, I would actually say that Perat is even more brilliant as a conversationalist. Uh, he combines an incredibly broad range of knowledge of many subjects with an absolutely wicked sense of humor. Um, he offers flashes of wisdom and flashes of absurdity in approximately equal measure, I would say. I remember um, one time I was upset about something and I called Perot up to ask his advice. And he said, look, don't try to understand why that person did that. People do crazy shit. There's no way we can figure it all out. Instead, Look at this as dark comedy. The world is full of humor if you know where to look for it. And that makes the intolerable tolerable. I never forgot that piece of advice. Perot fears nothing. That's part of what makes him such a unique and endlessly experimental author. When I think of Perot, I often think of him smoking cheap mohorka tobacco. He would roll up in newspaper uh, watching horror movies or French comedies. Uh, he is as unpretentious in his tastes as in everything else. He would often make friends with people half his age. Um, he never carried himself as a famous person, which he was a famous person and is. In a word, Perot is an original. I've never met anyone like him. I count myself lucky to know him. In 2017, as the Chinese government began herding Uyghurs into internment camps by the thousand, most, be most communications were cut off between the Uyghur region and the rest of the world. I lost touch with everyone I knew there. By late 2017 and early 2018, as the number of Uyghurs in the camps climbed past a million, it became clear that Uyghur intellectuals were particular targets. Given his position as an outspoken Uyghur intellectual, I worried deeply about Perot. I was right to worry. In late January 2018, I received word from friends in the Uyghur diaspora that Perot had been arrested and sent to a camp. We never learned what camp. In early 2020, we received news that Perot had been sentenced to more than a dozen years in prison. We never learned what prison he's in. We don't know what the supposed charges are. We don't know what state his health is in. We have heard absolutely nothing. It has been three years today. I think about him every day. What I would ask of everyone listening is, raise awareness of the crisis in the Uyghur region in every way you can. Tell your friends, write your newspaper, use social media, write your representatives, write the Chinese embassy. If Perot were here, he would speak out far more eloquently than I can on this subject. But since he cannot be here, we must all speak out as clearly as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Josh. And I see that now uh, some people are tuned in. Um, I invite every one of you who are watching us to ask questions, comments, and some people are thanking us for organizing this event, and some people are saying that um, they were also friends of Perhat Tursun. So we all remembering him today, and we are all um, wishing and screaming that he will be free soon. So I will. We decided to share some of Perhat's work. So there's a there's one uh, creative work that. Um, I created with Lisa Ross um, when we were organizing uh, um, 
I Can't Sleep um, um, exhibition in New York in 2019. So this is a live performance that we created. So we would like to share with you. When we come back, please ask questions, share your thoughts. And also I will invite all the panelists to be uh, shown on the on screen when we come back. So see you in a in a bit. And this work that we were sh showing is the poem of uh, Perhat Tursun, Qasida, Elegy. <laughs> Find the reason of their death. The executioner fades and disappears. 
Reflected in that bullet, pierced brains, fevered thoughts will be my form. Just then, do you know that I am with you? In those times when drinking wine was a greater crime than drinking blood? Do you know the taste of the flour ground in the blood turned mill? The wine that Ali Shir Narvahi deliriously drained took its flavor from my blood. In that endlessly mystical drunkenness as farthest, deepest chambers. Do you know that I am with you? Perhaps your soon. One of the most important living writers of the Weaver language. Detained January 2018. <laughs> So I will um, invite Tahir Hamut as Gil. Tahir Ka Yaxshimsiz. I will... Başqalana mı qoşaya yamimiz billi bolaylı? Bolda I will invite... Um, Back, Josh. I will invite Miaser. I will invite back Darren. So, yes. Um, so our next panelist is Tahir Hamut Izgil, and he will broadly talk about uh, the disappearance of Uyghur intellectuals and especially Perhat Tursun. Perhat, um, and um, he will be speaking in Uyghur, so we will try to provide a um, quick translation with Josh. Tahir, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good ve katnışıp bizden bugün kimmiş paliyetimiz ne? Para tursunla hatırlaştın kıgan mı şu paliyetimiz ne? Kürvatkan, anlavatkan, hem de dostlarla köptün köp rahmet. Hello everybody. Thank you both to the other panelists and to everybody watching this event uh, that we are putting on in order to speak out on behalf of Para Tursun. Para Tursun'un ait kaderlik bir dostumuz idi. Ben Para Tursun'un Ben bilen bakan biz paratlaşkımızdan dostluk topluluk azrak böyle şenç beğenliyken andın paratın tutuluş yeri ve bu yeri yandı ki ben de ilgiliyken bazı uçurlar hakkıda sözleyim. Parat is a very dear friend of mine um, and after I speak a little bit about our friendship um, I will explain about uh, Parat's disappearance and about the circumstances surrounding it. Ben Bermuda'da 1987 in 1987, um, I went to Beijing to study at the Central Nationalities Institute, and I heard that there was um, a student, a writer, uh, named Pera Tursun, two years ahead of us. Um, so with some friends, I went to meet him. Uh, biz, uh, Kürşçün kırgallıkımız ne dedik. Lakin onun uçağıdı kipadısı mende nait çok kırı tersir kaldı dedi. Çünkü o bizge naitte tazı dostanı bombağın bir kıl tersizde yakışık kısla oktan bopta daplı tızla içinde bir gekkıldı da. So me and some other new students uh, went to his dorm room to see him and we told him that we heard that you're a writer. Um, we're excited to meet you. And um, what really remains, or what really um, kind of uh, struck me, was that he was his rather nonchalant response, which was basically, "Oh, uh, nice," something like that. Şundan kırıp ben bu acab kopal bir balıkken bu bir tertibe adam minimada şundan ki onu mu geldi. 
Şunlar yatak kaytıp kettim. Ertesi yatak kız deyip kırptı. Vay tayır, cürün, kütüphanı kıbar mıyız? Ben sizi bazı kitaplarını tersi yapılı mıyım de. So um, I went back to my dorm room, kind of annoyed, uh, thinking, uh, what a rude guy. And um, the next day, though, he came looking for me and he said, come on, Tyler, let's go to the library. Um, and uh, so we went off to the library together. Uh, so we read many books together. He recommended a lot of books to me, um, particularly Western literature, um, philosophy, uh, other topics. And in the case of Uyghur literature, the Arab literature is the same as the Arab literature, or the Arab literature, or the Arab literature, bu teki intan yeni bir şeydi. Teki uçakta Uyghurlar teki bu nesnelerin asasa uçuruşu bakmadan. At that point in Uyghur literature, um, there was very little awareness of um, Western literature, um, you know, the sort of philosophy that influenced Western modernist literature, things like that. Uh, it was uh, only beginning, really, at that time. Bir kısım Adem'le Mesela Azaz Sultan, Katarlı bir Türküm edebiyat tatkaçları garip modernizm edebiyatını tanıştıran. Ama bu tanıştırış bitirilir. Yani Burjaziye edebiyatını tanıklık kılış noktasıdan e, sosyalizmlik meydanda durup e, tanıştırış boğazan azrakla. Uh, so a number of um, older literary critics had, had um, introduced uh, Western modernist uh, literature a little bit in Uyghur, but only from a sort of a negative standpoint of this is uh, bourgeois literature. Uh, that was essentially the extent of it. Uh, so Parat recommended these books to me. Um, we talked about them a lot and in a way, he became for me both mentor and friend. Uh, while we were studying at the Central Nationalities Institute, um, we were both Pikirdash and Sirdash friends. So these are words in Uyghur which don't really have exact English analogs, but basically we were um, people who shared our thoughts and we shared our secrets. Uh, uh, Men tunji kitabını neşir kıldığın çağda parat öz yeniden pul çıkarıp mine kollab yardımcı oldu. Ours is a friendship that has uh, stretched for 30 years. Um, at the most difficult times in my life, um, uh, such as when I was in prison, uh, Parat supported me however he could. Um, at the most um, Joyous times in my life, uh, like when I got married, uh, Pada was right there by my side. Um, most important moments, um, things like when I published my first book, uh, Pada uh, uh, helped uh, financially, and uh, you know, he's he's been there for me for three decades. Pada niki uygur edibiyatı da tutka uğruna nait özgüce. Perot has a very unique place in Uyghur literature. Uh, because his literary creativity um, has developed in a way which is entirely different from the mainstream of Uyghur literature. Uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, 
Um, for this reason, Padot's uh, works, um, his ideas, and his very character have been the um, subject of much debate within Uyghur literature. Um, as we all know, um, uh, serious and um, uh, dangerous changes began in the um, situation in the Uyghur homeland beginning in 2012. <coughs> Uh, so this included um, a reevaluation of basically all Uyghur publications from the 1980s uh, to the present um, for any signs of supposed uh, ethnic splitism um, or opposition to socialism or other ideas that the government didn't like. Um, and as a result of all of these um, uh, ominous changes that were occurring from 2012, um, we all, of course, were worrying, and Perat and I talked about uh, what we should do. Um, he was worried just as I was. Uh, Especially from the second half of 2016, it became clear that um, Uyghur intellectuals and Uyghurs in the arts and literature were going to be particular targets um, of this campaign. Uh, in August 2017, uh, you know, with difficulty, um, I moved to the United States. Um, and uh, the uh, ever since that time, I uh, lived with great worry about all of my friends back in the Uyghur homeland. Um, Particularly given what was uh, particularly given the constant arrest of Uyghur intellectuals. Şimdi <laughs> Uh, from late 2017, um, I heard constant reports of the arrest of Uyghur writers, poets, um, other uh, creative, other um, people in the arts. And um, in January 2018, um, I heard news that Perat had been arrested. Uh, Chatelike, 
من تونیدگان بلدگان اویگر یازگو شایلری جیگر میل ماشود. Around that time, uh, Abdulili Ayoub, myself, and others began preparing a list of uh, prominent Uyghur intellectuals who had been detained um, and sent to the camps. Um, and uh, that list grew to more than 400 people. Um, of the more than 400 Uyghur intellectuals on that list, uh, those who are uh, friends of mine uh, number more than 20. <laughs> زادی دو کنده تطلعان دو نهادی دو نیم سبب تن تطلعان دو دب ازشل پرده شو خبر نیلش کتریشتم. From that time, um, I did everything I could to uh, find any news of Perat um, through any channels possible to see how he was, where he was. Um, I tried. شکم اون تو کوزنچیله تو کوزنچی افکی اگه انجام داد. Urimchida lager the yetip lager don kuipil gan brailan ninke paratne lager the kugel the kavrikalde. In September 2019, um, somebody in Urimchi who had been in a camp um, was able to relate that they had seen parat in the camp. Arden uzunet mai Urimchiden shu per tonish plisla arkulak surishtrup. Not long after that, um, as a result of continued questioning, um, I was able to find out that, or I learned that um, Perat had been sentenced to 15 years in prison. Uh, I was deeply distressed and depressed at this news. Uh, uh, after that, I did what I could to confirm uh, this information. I made many calls. I called his office, but the people who answered the phone at his office refused to say anything about Parat. Uh, uh, then I did my best to uh, find out about Perat's wife. Um, by you know uh, communicating or uh, sort of uh, via other people in Arumchi who who knew Perat's wife, I, I did what I could to find out what her situation was. Likin akhre man kya kya khwada Perat nong ayal bilan unang atrap dikhe Perat nong ash ayal bilan bille briyada br. Um, but it became clear that um, even people who had worked with uh, Perat's wife in the same workplace um were uh felt cautious or rather were um unwilling to approach her that um they kept their distance from her and uh it became clear to me that um it would not be possible to find out about Perat's situation uh via his wife either <laughs> Uh, 
küçük balısı, ayalı, kançılık iğrak valda, kançılık bir kıl yarılaksız avaldı kagaş geldi ki en azlandı. Uh, it is therefore clear, I think, um, from these inquiries that uh, just how difficult uh, and painful a situation Parat's wife and his two children have been left in uh, as a result of his disappearance and his blacklisting by the state. And the Parat no tutulishi ve umbeshil kisilishi minunche bugenke dunyadiki anjong tragedia lan ombre. Um, for me, um, Peras' arrest and his uh, being sentenced to 15 years in prison um, is one of the greatest uh, tragedies I can think of. If now, at age 50, Perat uh, begins a prison sentence of 15 years. He will be 65 when he is released from prison. And the talent of the person who is in prison and the person If this occurs, um, a talented writer's uh, most mature and potentially productive years will instead pass uh, in a prison cell. Uh, I think I'll, I'll say this much for now. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for Josh for translating this emotional. I, I, I, I'm really emotional. Tairka, this is hard. I, I, I must say this is hard to hear and this, this must be really hard to to to tell what has happened and who he was and also what he said in the end Tahir Hamoud for um, the the disappearance of Tahir um, Hamoud is the biggest tragedy of our time and which is true because he is a truly talented and greatest one of the greatest mind in this in this world um I would like to invite our audiences as well to participate. I know I I saw some of the messages. Some people are saying that this is really great that we're talking about Parhat Tursun. And some people also sharing their encounter, their friendship with Parhat Tursun. And um, also many thanks for everyone who's sharing uh, Parhat Tursun's um, the story. Um, I also want our audiences to know that if you have any questions, if you have any uh, any points that you want to clarify, please feel free to ask. Um, there is um, a video that we made um, with uh, the real uh, poetry reciting of Parhat Tursun and with the help of a musician um, who is um, who helped me to work on the audio. A sound designing and this video will be um, released on Penn International's next Creative Witnesses program in the um, 8th of February. Her gün ettiğin Eski tüski ter gücünün kubal ve set avazı Eski tüski ter gücünün kubal ve set avazı Şişlerin Bar küçüblen karar öyge sığdılıp Bar küçüblen karar öyge sığdılıp 
Yeter yadım ve nurgun caylarda, kep kalganını adresim ve telefon numaramla. Şunu bilen hissedim ben. Yukat kandek nurgun nersini. Yukat kandek nurgun nersini. Yukat kandek sizim hatta. En mühim içki sevmelerim. En mühim içki sevmelerim ne? Çoğun koçularda hep yalama çiz kılırmen yüzüm. Çoğun koçularda hep yalama çiz kılırmen yüzüm ne? Çünkü hiç kim gelmeyi istedim. Hiç kim bana vurmaz telefon. Hiç kim bana vurmaz telefon. Elkim ular uğurluqca nelerde dur küzü termini Numussuzlar çıqlar tam aşak Telefon numar ve adır simli Tam aşak kılandık resvalar çıxırlarımdı Resvalar çıxırlarımdı Sırtka çıkış kapetin almasın. Sırtka çıkış kapetin almasın. Emmini bulmayan bunda oldu. Eski tarik içinden sert ve bu ok avazı. Eski tüskü tarik içinden sert ve bu ok avazı. Binalar kutuşken abdan çilmesi Yutkandın kütürlüyen tennim Bet boyu bırakı Tan atkınını itiraf kılış kızlar kişi Tan atkınını itiraf kılış kızlar kişi So I would like to invite um, Muyesser to share with us uh, her story and her um, encounter with Perhat Tursun. Muyesser, siz ki kedi. Hi Mekades. Hi. Thank you for having me. Hello, everybody. I'm honored to share my friendship with Perhat Tursun here. I first met him in Urumqi in August 2006 when I was working as a part-time journalist for an Uyghur farm. Um, that was around when his works were receiving critics and became a hot topic. Some people supported him and his works while others expressed strong disagreements. I never commented on any of them. But I said to our team that I didn't like him because he became a source of unnecessary disputes. So the team arranged me to interview with him. To my surprise, I met a totally different person than I expected. Um, he was humble and quiet. I asked about his work, um, the, the Art of Suicide, which was the main target of the critics at the time. 
uh, he said that it was written when he was around 18, so it wasn't even worth criticizing. After he started his PhD in Central University of Nationalities, he also worked as a lecturer. I was studying in Beijing University then, so I visited him time to time and we talked about our common interest, uh, that was psychology. He also allowed me to join some of his lessons. I remember he taught wholeheartedly and in a very humorous way. Uh, I consider him one of my mentors whom I had the chance to know in those years. I recently talked to his students to know more about him. And one of them, Zuhra Abdulwahid, told me specifically about him as a teacher. According to her, he made their college year more meaningful than ever. He didn't teach them what was on the textbook, rather taught them other things that he believed more valuable. Um, they first uh, heard about psychology and literature from him, learned more about what they could never learn from other sources, for example, completely new and the different meanings in the fairy tales they had been reading since their childhood. Um, nobody in the class wanted to miss his classes. Classmates even thought of writing his thesis on Parhat Tursun's trend of writing. Um, they all remember him with respect and admiration. At the end of the semester, he asked them to write an essay and as an exam and tell them what score they wanted to get. So they all finished that semester with high scores and improved themselves in important polls. Uh, the other point I want to add is that he was a real book addict who loved reading most advanced academic books in English. He bought the books which were not easy to find there, to read, not to display. Um, I believe he doesn't feel lonely um, in prison now. What he has learned can never be erased. They can give him strength as well as hope to survive. So now I would like to read a poem which I dedicated to him. I appreciate Dr. Uh, I appreciate for Dr. Joshua Freeman translating it today. Uh, he will read the translation after the original version. Turmiga hat, perhat tursunga. Sini ilk getken kiti ya ki kündüznün aldıraş kademleri de. Mən belki senin sınıfındaki bir burcaki ketken idim. Yandın tanışı gücü bulup aşı iki üç saat. Senin çonkurlukların ga. Senin mezgilsiz korukların ga. Senin hayattın kaçkan, hayattın yorukların ga. Berdemlik nur çüken hiyallarımda yetken idim. Seni yalgız digerler bar idi. Sen yalgız emes edin. Yalgız kalmay sen. Açlık öldürülmeydiğen kitapların bar içinde. Usuzluk çankıtalmaydıgan fikirlerin yar içinde. Tayaklar ağırtalmaydıgan hakikat sorar içinde. Yalgızlık digen kandak buludu. Közlerin teklü makanda Tarım otoludu. Sen seher turuşka adetlengen çokum. Nimi keri ki tan yorumay uyğut işlerinin. Sen sual soraklağa adetlengen burundun. Nimi keri ki fut kollarını çüşek ayetten soğutışka urun işlerinin. Sen soğumay sen, senden yüz öğregen ayetten mi? Seni zımıstanda digerler bilip kaladu. Senin her zaman bir baharda yaşığının mı? Senin vatının mı? Bahar bilen açlığının mı? Reşat kılardın, sen karımaysan bizge. Biz han tan bolımız ruhinin erkin kanat yiyişlerge karab. Yazgallarını biz okumayınız. Olar bizge bizne okup beridu. Olar bizge sendin birne tok beridu. Thank you all. Thank you, Masad. Um, so this is, uh, I just prepared this translation this morning and I don't know if it does the poem justice yet, but um, it's, uh, it's a pretty amazing work. Um, so, a letter to the prison. Muyasar Abdulhat Khandan for Peratursun. 
in the busy footsteps of the night or day they took you. Perhaps I ran to the corner of your classroom to listen quietly for a couple hours. And when my thoughts shone for a moment, I saw your depths, your face wrinkled too early, and the light from your life that was refuge from life. Some said you were alone, but you were never lonely. Loneliness is not for you. Within you are books no hunger can extinguish. For friends, you have thoughts no thirst can dry out. Within you speaks a justice that no blow can injure. What would loneliness be? Your desert eyes fill with the river Tarim. You always got up early. Why do they now wake you before dawn? You've always known hard questions. Why do they now bind your limbs and stamp out your fire? In life's harshest hour, you will never grow cold. Those who see you in winter will learn that for you, spring is every day, that you heal the homeland with the spring. You do not look to us through iron bars. It is we who look to you for freedom. We do not read the books you wrote. They read us to ourselves. They bring you to our eyes. It's, it's really a powerful poem. Thank you for sharing this, this poem and thank you for doing like in this really short amount of time, the translation. And thank you very much. There have been a lot of very thankful messages in the, um, from the, our audiences and they're thanking both of you and they're also um, really enjoyed the, the poetry that Mesa wrote. Um, so I still want to invite everyone. It's great that we are all remembering Per Hattorsson. It's really an important date. And please don't forget that we need to raise awareness about his case and also the other intellectuals, anyone who's suffering in these camps. And we need to let people know that these people who Chinese government put into camps are also vibrant people and their, their, their messages and their work is really important for human humanity, human culture, and all of us, like everyone should know about Per Hattorsson's work. Um, I would like to invite our last panelist, Darren, please take place and we would like to know about your work and your relationship to Per Hattorsson. Thank you. Sure, it's an honor to be here. What a, a moving um, past hour. Uh, I've, I came to Arumchi in 2014 uh, for a, a, a year of field work uh, to really study migration to the city of Arumchi, which is the capital of, of the Uyghur region. Um, and I was interested in, you know, what kind of life migrants find in the city, um, how, are they treated by, by government authorities? How does it break down by ethnic lines? And what effect does it have on their social life? Um, and so as I, as I was starting to explore those questions, starting to meet people, um, I had the good fortune of, of, of uh, talking to one of our mutual friends, both of Josh and Tyre Akas, um, about my research. And he pointed me towards one of Perhat's books, um, uh, a novel that that wasn't even fully written yet um, and was only semi-published. It was called The Big City or Chong Shehed. Um, and it's written as a series of novellas. The first novella had already been published online, um, but as I found out later, was still in processes of revision. Because one of the things that Perhat does is he kind of writes over decades um, and he's always thinking with his work and revising it um, as he can. Um, 
so I started reading that book and it just sort of opened up a whole world to me um, that would have been difficult to gain access to without it as sort of a guide as to, you know, what does alienation feel like if you're a weak or young person coming to this a city that's, that's Han majority, um, where the institutions are really set up in opposition to you. Um, and as I started exploring the book and, and I ban began translating it with a friend, we started to meet regularly and read it together and translate it together. Um, it began to, to show me things that I hadn't anticipated. Um, it turned out that the book is sort of semi-biographical, autobiographical. Um, it, it starts or it goes from Kashgar to Beijing and then to Urumqi, which is this sort of life path that um, that, that Parhat took, uh, although he started not in Kashgar, but Atush. Um, and it, there's a, a, a discussion of, of disorientation as they come to the city of Urumqi, of being kind of turned around. Um, as as the, the protagonist in the novella talks about, um, you know, when he was growing up, the mountains were to the north, and now they're to the east and the west. Um, and the, the city planning is on a grid, um, and so it's not clear, like, you know, which direction is Mecca. Uh, all of these things are, are turning him around. Um, and he's making sense of it. And as I talked to other people, migrants to the city, they said, "Yeah, that's how we feel. That's this is this is our experience." Um, the thing that he repeats over and over in this novella, the the protagonist is, "No one recognizes me in the city, so it's impossible for me to be friends or enemies with anyone." Um, and when I talked to Parhat about it later, he said. That's because it, it saying this gives him a sense of protection, a sense of security that he's anonymous in the city, um, and that no one can can can harm him because they don't know him. Um, over time, though, they do get they get to know him and they they push him out. Um, that's that's the trajectory of the novella. The thing that shows up over and over again in the novella is the way that his boss uh, in his workplace smiles at him all the time while he um, is is you know, secretly trying to push him to the side, try to push him out. Um, it's clear that this boss is Han. Um, his his coworkers are condescending to him constantly. Um, and that's articulated in a whole bunch of different scenes. Um, and over the course of the novella, the violence that he's coming from in the countryside and the violence he's moving towards in the city um, are slowly revealed. So there's a kind of suspense that's built into the novella. Um, one of the things he talks about over and over again is that in the city that he has no place, that all he's been given is a drawer in a desk. Um, he doesn't even have uh, an apartment or any other space where he could actually lay himself down. Um, he's also finding that his sense of smell is increasing um, over time throughout the novella. Um, and he's being sort of treated as though he's subhuman or, or non-human um, by his coworkers. Um, and over time you start to think that, oh, he's actually literally becoming a rat. That's how he starts to think about himself as being um, less, than, less than human in some ways. So thinking with that novella was really important for me as I was doing my work uh, because it, it helped me think about what dehumanization actually feels like what institutionalized violence feels like. Um, but it also helped me think about the beautiful moments of in rural Uyghur life and how that comes into the city, um, how people sing as they work, um, how they measure time, how they have particular techniques of the body that they carry with them and that refuses to be erased. Um, as I talked to migrants about the story, sometimes they had read it, most of the times they hadn't. So I'd sort of just tell them parts of the story. Um, what I found was that this novella actually stages something that everyone was holding in common, um, something that, that made sense to them and was really the first time that they were seeing their own lives being represented on a public stage. Um, at the same time, it, it also was showing something different to them because this person that's coming to the city is all alone. And they said, we're never alone. We always have our friends. We always have our family. And without them, we would feel all alone. Um, and that's the main difference between us and the protagonist of this person in the city. When I think about the, the novella, which is now under contract at Columbia University Press and will be coming out next year, or well, maybe later this year, but probably next year, um, it, it reminds me a lot of, of work that's coming out of apartheid South Africa or um, you know, Jim Crow, US, 
um, the work of like J.M. Kotzea, The Life and Times of Michael Kay, or The Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. Um, and I'm very excited to, to have this, this, this novella brought to a broader audience because I think what, what Parhat's work does is it, is it is engaging world literature, it's engaging modernist thinking, you know, I had so many conversations with Parhat about, you know, Lacan, <laughs> about psychoanalytic theory, about how he learned Chinese so he could read Schopenhauer. Um, he's a really lucid thinker, um, and that really leaps to the front in the page. Um, at the same time, he's a masterful storyteller, and you can tell that he has the skill of a poet because he's writing these little images, you know, right at the level of the sentence. Um, and so, it's imperative that his work be brought to the public um, and to broader audiences. And you know, most of his work, you know, is still kind of in, in various stage of, of being unpublished. So there's lots of work to be done. I last contacted him um, in the summer of 2017. Well, he contacted me on Facebook um, and he was asking me about um, translating his second novella. He was kind of impatient about it and thought I should work on it right away. Um, he thought he had a VPN that wouldn't be detected. So he said it was safe. I told him, I don't think it was. Um, and then we found out later, you know, it really probably wasn't safe. He, he disappeared. Um, it's very hard to think about the life that he's experiencing now. Um, he's such a, a joyous um, person who, who sees beauty, who sees humor in the absurd. Um, I'm sure he's finding ways to survive. But like all of us have said, this is, is an immense tragedy. And it's something that all of us should protest and all of us should engage. Um, like they were saying in that video, you know, he's with us and, and we need to understand that he's still with us everywhere we go. I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm Personally, thank you very much for doing this this job to make his novella available for everyone. And I, as as every, we are saying from this the beginning of this um, event, that his work should be known, read by more people. And um, I really like the image of lu lucid thinker and um, joyful person who sees beauty in in everything, in like in the absurd situations. I'm I mean that's. I hope he he uses that skill to to survive this really tragic time. Um, I'm not seeing anyone asking any questions from our audiences, but um, I will invite you to do that. But I will also invite everyone in this panel to join back in to the conversation and um, to share some thoughts. And if you have any um, questions to each other, and um, yeah, I would like to invite you back and please unmute yourself and then ask questions. I, I also have um, some questions. Probably I will start just the first question. Um, so uh, um, from Josh. Um, so the, the process of translating his poetry and it's really like, his poetry is hard to understand. And at, at the same time, how is, what is your process to translate his poetry and make it really um, understandable and um, re really like emotional for everyone? Um, well, I can only hope that I've achieved that. Um, but uh, like I said, I started translating his poetry around 2007, maybe even 2006. Um, and uh, I, I think the first, the first is, poems I published, as I mentioned, were um, Elegy and Morning Feeling. Um, and in 2018, after I heard news that he had been arrested, I kept thinking about Elegy, um, which everybody just heard um, Lisa Ross reading my translation of um, in, the, in the video we just watched. And that poem just speaks so powerfully uh, to the injustice and tragedy of history and also of the individual uh, nonetheless surviving within it. So I just kept thinking of that poem. And I went back and looked at the translation that I published in 2011 and I was totally unsatisfied with it. So I, I did a new translation. Um, so it's, it's constantly um, 
you know, an effort to uh, come up with translations that are more faithful to the original, that are more, that get across more of the emotion and the meaning of the original, um, which is, of course, not the same thing as, or not identical to word to word, line to line faithfulness. Um, I think actually, you know, for, for Padot's poetry, back when I was, you know, living in a room and translating it, if, you know, what I would do is I would, I would do my translation and then if I had any questions about what Padot meant by a given line or something, I would call him up or we'd meet up and we'd talk about it. And, you know, sometimes we would spend an hour or two hours talking about one of his poems. And I felt then and I feel now just so incredibly grateful for that time that I spent with him talking about that. Um, not just because I have no way to talk with him now, um, though that's part of it, but also even then I felt a lot of gratitude because um, his is such an exceptional mind and such an exceptional imagination um, that to talk through this work with its author and talk about what he was thinking as he wrote it and so on is such a, was such a special experience. Um, you know, his poetry is pretty postmodern, you could say, for the most part. Um, and uh, sometimes, actually, um, the uh, newness of his work in Uyghur can be the hardest part to convey in English because some things that are almost a bit shocking you know, you know, in Uyghur poetry or were when Padot was first publishing them are not that shocking in English language poetry. Um, so sometimes, you, you know, I can try to strike a balance there. Um, but uh, the other thing is that uh, Padot is perfectly happy to let a sentence go on for many lines. Um, and uh, that totally works in Uyghur because of the way verbs are structured, and things like that. In English, it can be a real challenge. Um, so, but it's, it's, a, it's a, a fulfilling challenge. Um, you know, when you, when you translate somebody's poem, you feel like you've kind of been um, communing with their mind. Um, and uh, that's why it's always such a such a privilege to translate poetry. So I don't know if I successfully answered your question, but that's what comes to mind. Yeah, it's it's really nice to have know like your process processing of translating his poetry is also communicating with him and discussing his poetry with him. That's really important. Um, some people are asking questions and this is a very important one, I think. And I think everyone in this panel is asking themselves this question. Um, the question is, apart from raising awareness and talking about Perhat Tursun on social media, what else we can do? And what else we can do? Do you want to share any thoughts on that? Can Josh translate that um, to Tahir Hamut? Um, um, apart from raising awareness on social media and hoping for like his release, what else we can do? Okay. Uh, uh, and the Bzniki as the Quarta, Chatelik Uyurlanen, Shundakla Chatelik, Dostrum Zninke, Yaki Uyurl Ahwal Kumul Vildalanen, Turmediki, Yak Lagerdiki, Uyurlan Kutkusjate, Kuladra Schlere, Bekup Amelette. Sorry. Uh, in fact, there are a lot of things that those of us outside of China can do uh, in regard to the situation in the Uyghur homeland and for uh, the countless Uyghurs who are currently imprisoned in uh, camps and uh, prisons and labor facilities. Uh, 
lagırları yetiştirmek boğaçka. Yani biz bunu önümüne kürüşçün, bulağı boğan, çünkü hükümetteki boğan besimini aşırış ve bulağı kulumuzun kilişçe bulağı yardım kılışçün, biz köpürek şu teşvikatını, Muşna social media la the gap glitch na asas kulu atmaz. But because the situation is so extreme, um, in order to increase pressure on the Chinese party state um, to change the situation there, uh, we are currently expending a lot of effort to try to boost the signal uh, in all kinds of media, including social media. Am the uzurak mezgil ne ginis pita etkanda albette. Aştırmadaki para tırsın kokşaş yazgıçlarının ki ya ki Uyghur e, ziyalilerinin ki e, eserlerini tercüm kılıp ve İngilizlere tanıştırış e, buna ait muyum bir iş. Ama bu iş e, biraz uzun mezgillik plan belin bulduğum bir iş. Uh, of course translating work by um, Uyghur authors and particularly by Uyghur authors in the camps and prisons uh, is going to be a very important part of this. Um, but it is something that gives fruit over a longer period. It's a, it's kind of a long-term effort. Hem de her bir adamın ki ahval okşumaydı. Uygurlar kömül bildiğen, muşunla azırk dünyadaki en çok tragediyelerin bir olan Uygur muşu azremde irki kırgınçılık diyen geplin bulu atıdı. Muşun da bir ahvalga kömül bilgen barlık dostanın hem de yüzünün kuldun kancilik kişi gelse, mail sosyal medya aldı bulsun, mail başka şekilde bulsun, Muşnunga yardım kılışını, kumul bilişini, hiç bu mümkün çapta dikkat kılışını ümit kılayım hemen. Given, uh, of course, each one of us um, has different circumstances and different opportunities for engaging on this. Um, but uh, at the very least, uh, we would ask that everybody pay attention to and do what they can uh, in regard to one of the uh, most serious um, catastrophes in the world today, a uh, situation which is now widely being referred to as a genocide. Rahman. Thank you. Do any, any of you want to say anything in addition to Tahiran's ideas? I mean, sure, I can add a few things. Um, it's very hard to know how we can intervene in Perhat's case in particular. I mean, we can petition, we can write to the Chinese government. And um, and I think if we you know, bring his work to the fore, that will also uh, have some effect in bringing him into the mainstream in, in different ways. Um, and so more institutional funding for Uyghur cultural production, cultural translation is really important. Um, and so that's something that a lot of people could contribute to, I, I think. Um, really just uplifting the voices of Uyghurs um, who are in diaspora and who can really speak with authority to, to what's going on on the ground and really, and also begin to, to communicate the, the deep history of Uyghur culture, uh, the Uyghur knowledge systems. Um, so that's, you know, more events like this, I think would be great too. Um, but it's, you know, everyone's stretched really thin. And so more and more support from people sort of at the margins of the community or you know, people that are just starting to, to, to become aware of what's going on would be really useful. Then there's of course, broader campaigns that people can get involved with. Um, there's, you know, labor rights campaigns that would begin to push back against forced labor, uh, which is part of the system in Northwest China. Um, there's, uh, government level things that can be done, um, you know, boycotting the Olympics is something that would send a signal to people back in China as to how serious the situation really is and is being read because I think there's still a, an information gap among many people in China as to what's actually happening, what their government is doing in their name. Um, so so there's, there's that kind of work that can be done. Josh, do you want to add something? Um, well, I think Tayaka and Darren have um, put it all very eloquently. I guess I would just add that there are uh, human rights organizations uh, very actively working on this issue. Um, 
you can always donate to them. Um, the Uyghur Human Rights Project in particular is a Uyghur-led organization, um, which is uh, playing a leading role in all of this. Um, there is uh, shait.biz, uh, it's a website. Um, I think it's just S-H-A-H-I-T dot B-I-Z, if I remember correctly, um, which is, um, it is devoted to um, uh, collecting information on as many people who have been sent to the camps and prisons as possible and making that publicly available and documenting the crisis individual by individual. Um, they are constantly in need of help, not just monetary, but they also need volunteers to help with data entry, translation, and so on. So there are organizations out there that you can get involved with if you don't know where to start. Rahmat, thank you very much. And um, uh, uh, one of our audience is saying that Darren raised a very important point. It's really important for wider world to understand what is happening, who are the Uyghurs, and to um, to especially the, the the situation of imprisonment of people such as Perhat Tursun. It is a really important point. Thank you very much. Um, there is another question um, for Tairaka. I think he read the question. It was uh, asked in, in Uyghur. So, can Josh or Darren wants to give it a translation, or do you want me to do it? I can translate it. Um, okay. Should I read it in Uyghur first? Or? No. Yes, do that for the pleasure for, for Uyghurs to re like listen to your Uyghur. Oh, um, I don't know how much pleasure that's going to be, but mental can resource for much. Since Peratosun Uyghur had been a class chat in the Peratusunga Kartlawan Tankit, Bolopmo, Yalhurosne Tankit, Bunga Kadak Taskusette. So, um, Taika, I have a question for you. In your opinion, um, what um, contributions has Peratusun made to Uyghur literature? Um, and uh, the criticism directed at him, particularly uh, Yalhurose's criticism, um, what effect have has that had? Paratusuninki, Uyradibatuki, Urne, Night Uzgicha. Paratusun has a, a unique, thoroughly unique place in Uyghur literature. Chinke, Parat Uznung Aselder Arkluck, Uyghur Adibatuninki, and Anivi, Asas Teams Turkagan Bazi, Stipik, Kuskrashlan Ogdua. Because in his works, Perat has deliberately overturned uh, many traditional themes and views in traditional Uyghur literature. And the other part is that the other concrete message is that the concrete message is So, uh, uh, so it, this is not the place. This is not the place for us to get into. Um, a detailed discussion of the various criticisms of Parat's work. Paratinki, we read about the Muim Urn the Turdalaki, where we know Asalderninki, Uzgich Kamet Kelikine, Uyur Adivat Kazakuran, Uyur Adivat Dehat Kuran, Arkanda Adam is Kalaido. The importance of Parat's work and its place in Uyghur literature um, will be clear to any. To any Uyghur reader who uh, reads the works themselves. That's. I'm the Yalkuros Niki, Tanki Diki Kasek, Bu Amdel Sal Burkadar Adibirak Rumasla, Bu Maslane, Bashkuber teams to the Alk Idem, a decent number Nasa, Amunstiga, Paraturzumla, Yalkuroso Tristiki, Bu Munazira. Adibiyat dairesinden sel alık getken tarafı var. Şuna bunu diyede alık ziyat için kullanıp telkiliş muhafet edemez. So um, the debate or argument or fight between Peratosun and Yalhurozi is uh, a fairly specialized uh, literary topic. Uh, in fact, it's um, a debate which was somewhat beyond literature, was not just about literature. 
Um, so it is, is worthy of uh, separate discussion in its own right. Uh, so if there are people who want to discuss more on um, Padat's role in Uyghur literature and why it is that his works um, inspired such heated debate, um, I would be happy to discuss that further in a different forum dedicated to that topic. Rahmat. Thanks. Thank you very much, Rahmat. Um, for those who doesn't really know um, the other uh, intellectual that we're talking about, Yalqun Rozi, and he's also a very important figure um, for our culture. Um, so if you want to know more, please, uh, we can provide some uh, some information and you can also uh, learn about his work and his contribution to Uyghur culture and Uyghur literature. Um, yeah. Can I just add something real quick about Yalkun? That it's important to know that Yalkun has also been put in prison um, and you know he will be uh, around the same age as, as Parhat when he's released, I think, uh, you know, uh, per the sentence that he was given. Um, so both writers have been treated, you know, very unfairly, neither deserving the sentences that they've been given. Um, we have very little information about his case also. Thank you very much. Um, I think we have been talking about um, Parhat Tursun for over the one hour and a half. Um, and um, I'm sure that we have like still hours of discussion about his work, his personality and um, his um, place in the world and um, him as a thinker, as a friend, as a teacher. Uh, but I hope we can do this again. I hope we can have more in, in detail, in, in depth conversation about his work. So that's something that we can organize. And um, also I invite everyone to start reading his poetry from the translation of uh, Josh. And then when the, the book translation, the novella is published, you can hopefully also read the translation from Darren. Um, thank you very much. I don't know if the panelist wants to add anything to conclude. I would just uh, thank people for, thank everyone for coming and watching. And uh, once again, just encourage you to add your voice in any way you can um, to bring more, to raise awareness on this issue, um, Pera Tursun's internment and the broader catastrophe in the Uyghur region. Uh, I'm down the Kulaniki, a mush Akhwalaki Kat Kotoshine, a holding Kilisha, was not called Shunt Kulme. I would also like to thank everybody who watched and listened to um, this event today, and everybody who is um, paying attention to and engaged on uh, the crisis in the Uyghur region. I hope that everybody remains uh, attentive and engaged on this issue. Thank you. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, thank you everyone for listening. This means that you are interested in Uyghur issue and that means a lot to us. Thank you. Thank you all for coming uh, and for engaging with this. Um, you know, Parhat Tursun is a one of a kind person a unique individual in the world. Um, you know, getting to know him was uh, one of the, the most momentous, you know, periods of my life and has shaped me as it shaped Josh. Um, so thinking about where he's at now and 
about how much his his voice needs to be heard um, is really what's motivating me to do a lot of the work that I'm doing. Um, and I really hope that that those of you that are listening can um, engage his work um, and, and, and, and involve yourself in the situation that is confronting the Uyghurs. Um, so thanks again for coming. Um, thank you also for all the panelists. They have been, we have been receiving a lot of messages from our audiences, thanking everyone and wishing that we can organize more discussion around Parhat's work. So hopefully we can have another sessions or more sessions to have like detailed discussions about him. And I also want to thank everyone. And also I want to mention that there will be another event in the 8th of February organized by Penn International Creative Witnesses. So I will share them their YouTube account with you so you can have a look on the 8th of um, February. Um, they are also um, uh, raising awareness about Perhat Tursun and they're also uh, releasing a video that we made with Josh and a sound uh, engineer which uh, his name is Asher. So we did a video uh, using one of his poetry, um, The Morning Feelings, The Morning Feeling. Um, so thank you very much. And um, hopefully you can keep talking about Parhat, not only Parhat, but also everyone who's suffering in this inhumane conditions. And um, please be aware and also, please join and read his poetry. His poetry is really beautiful and really profound. And also really, yeah, come back again to discuss with us um, his poetry, his work. Thank you for everyone. Uyghur Stories is hosted by Muqaddas Mejid and John Baer. It is produced by The New Wild. Our audio engineer is Hashad. Our theme music was also composed by Hashad. Uyghur Stories is made possible with the support from the U.S. Embassy in Paris. For more information, please visit us online at www.uyghurstories.com. That is www dot w e g h u r s t o r i e s dot com. Of course, you can find us on Instagram at Uyghur Stories. <laughs>